The market's about to pump like it did back when the Fed decided to print money and this time, it will be an even better rally. Fellas, after close to two years of enduring the pains of inflation, which are still being felt by the way, the markets have made a full recovery and are destined to make new highs. This presents investors, in this case you my dear viewer, with countless opportunities ahead. So, the question is, how can you make money in a market like this, right? Whether you are an investor or day trader, how can you set yourself up for success when the markets are going to be in a bullish rally, how can you evaluate which stocks are best for you and find the best assets to own? This is what we are going to be talking about in this video today. Let's begin with the big news, the S&P 500 rallies to an all-time high today, surpassing that all-time high record it set up back in 2022. Investors returned to buying equities in force, as CNBC put it. Following the 19% loss in 2022, the S&P 500 roared back, posting a 24% gain on the account that the economy has seemingly avoided a recession that so many expected. Inflation, as you guys know, has been cooling off, allowing the Federal Reserve to pause its interest rate hikes. If you guys participate in the market, you will know that beginning in early January, the market has had a couple week sessions as many investors decided to take profits. Well, that has definitely stopped, because yesterday we reached a huge milestone as the S&P 500 jumped more than 35% since the low of October back in 2022. So, now that you know what the big deal is, I want to share my favorite top 3 stocks I plan to buy this year with a long-term investment outlook, because I think you can significantly benefit from knowing this as well. Before I start, let me extend simply click the link in the video description or the pinned comment and come join us already. With that said, let's continue. Beginning with by far one of the safest investments in the market, Meta. Yeah, the controversial CEO isn't popular in Congress given the surmountable amount of controversies he has endured in regards to privacy, but let me tell you what. Regardless of what your personal opinion of Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook is, one cannot deny that in the current global landscape, you cannot survive without being present in social media, and by far, Meta is owner of some of the biggest and most important ones out there. The company has insanely positive financial performance with a solid base for growth. Through the first nine months of 2023, Meta generated over $94 billion in revenue, which was up 12% from 2022. It has had a net income of $25 billion, a 35% increase from last year as well. Across its different products, which are Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Threads and WhatsApp among many others, they now boast nearly 4 billion monthly active people, an increase of 7% from more than a year ago. What you must understand is that Meta is a digital leader, and though it has faced a lot of challenges, such as Apple's privacy policies wounding their advertising business and TikTok taking attention away, Zuckerberg's company has still managed to increase ad revenue. They have demonstrated an ability to emulate and steer past competition. For example, Reels was a feature that was made out of a response to TikTok's short video format product. Reels is now a very powerful component that drives a lot of engagement. Reels alone has been credited for driving more than 40% increase in time spent on Instagram for example. And guess what, it doesn't end there. Meta isn't simply just improving on the things it offers, but actively building the future of social media. Artificial intelligence is a big thing right now, and Meta products and services are all being molded to integrate AI as part of its core business model. We know Meta is investing heavily in AI research and development. In fact, according to filings, Meta has been investing about $4 billion per quarter in AI, and recent news two days ago indicate Meta is going to be spending billions worth of NVIDIA GPS by the end of year 2024. Zuckerberg is focused on building massive compute infrastructure to support their future roadmap, they are investing on the foundations of a business that is due to continue growing even more. This is on top of the fact that Meta has also been investing on augmented reality glasses and virtual reality ones are well, forging a partnership with Ray-Bans not too long ago. So why do I think Meta is a good investment opportunity? By analyst accounts, Meta is expected to continue delivering strong financial performances, there is no sign that they aren't growing. They have proven to have many growth levers that they can pull to and opportunities to capitalize on. Wall Street is actually forecasting a 32% annual earnings growth over the next five years. Given Meta brings in so much revenue, has immensely popular products and services, have proven they can adapt and overcome both competitors and regulatory challenges, are investing in AI and are set to continue growing, Meta is one of my favorite companies in the market and I plan to buy shares throughout the year. 
it's a puzzle how this company still isn't doesn't have a trillion dollar market cap. Next up is the big deal in the markets and one of the most impressive companies out there right now, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a titan, and while before I used to be a little apprehensive about it, I now have come to realize not only its future potential, but more importantly, its staying power, which is actually more important at the moment. Let's talk basics first, NVIDIA has held over 80% market share in desktop GPS despite strong competition from AMD and Intel. They recently posted revenue growth of 206% year-over-year, hitting $18 billion total, a massive feat, but it doesn't stop there. Operating income soared more than 1600% to $10 billion. This immense growth was due to the 279% increase in data center revenue. They have had a strong surge in chip demand, but here's the kicker, this industry has just begun getting started. According to Grandview Research, the AI market reached $197 billion last year and is expected to expand to a compound annual growth rate of 37% through 2030. This means that the sector is expected to exceed $1 trillion before the end of the decade, which leaves more than plenty of room for NVIDIA to keep growing. You have to realize, PC shipments were falling for the last two years, but are now beginning to recover. In the fourth quarter of 2023, PC shipments saw growth again. So given the great performance it has had across its multiple products and services, now we get to the bottom question, why am I bullish on NVIDIA still, even after its meteoric rise? The reason I will be buying a lot of NVIDIA this year is because the current conditions of business signals that there is a huge AI race going on. We talked about it briefly with Meta and how they are investing billions of dollars on AI, but it isn't just Meta. It's Apple, it's Microsoft, Oracle, Google, Marvell and just essentially any business in the tech sector. Everyone is running quickly to invest in their AI department, and NVIDIA is currently poised to be the biggest winner given they have the best product. If the world is about to go to war, the winning side will always be the arms dealer, as he stands to profit the most. This is that same scenario but with AI, and NVIDIA is the best AI dealer out there. But if that doesn't compel you, then rest assured that Wall Street is beginning to accept this reality and make it the status quo. Believe me, this growth NVIDIA has enjoyed hasn't been because of retail, it has been because of institutional buyers knowing what's ahead of everyone. Wall Street sees value in NVIDIA because of the reasons I just pointed out, and they understand that this player has an even larger role to play ahead in the coming years. There is still a large gap that hasn't been filled in terms of correctly pricing this company in for the next decade, which is why everyone is buying frantically and the stock keeps going up, and it's one that I fully intend on participating in. I will buy NVIDIA this year in large amounts because the company's products and services will be what every other tech company will be buying. Simple as that. And lastly, we reach my favorite stock of them all, the one company that I am a huge fan of and that I plan on buying left, right and center. Before I disclose why this will be a major holding in my portfolio, let me once again invite you over to my Discord. I've been talking about this company for years now. Not only is my Discord focused on day trading, but long-term investing takes a huge part as well. Long-term investing is vital for long-term success, and day trading should be used to fuel long-term investment holdings. If you are looking for a space where the best investments are talked about constantly, where we talk about the latest news and the best opportunities for you, hit that link in the pinned comment already. With that said, let's talk about why Microsoft is my favorite all-time investment. Microsoft has something that other tech companies don't, diversification. Microsoft offers a strong myriad of products and services that are used by pretty much over 80% of the world. Since their new CEO Satya Nadella took over, their approach to business has changed dramatically. Whereas once they opted to want to compete in selling you windows and hoping you would buy their products, they are now operating from the stance that the best approach is a subscription based on. That's right, they took inspiration from Netflix's business model and have successfully replicated it across its many products. For example, Microsoft once wanted you to own an Xbox in order to grow revenue, but now, they don't really care if you own the plastic box as much as they care about you being a member of Game Pass, a subscription model that allows people to play online and have access to an ever-growing library of games. Their recent acquisition with Activision at a cost of $69 billion shows just how serious this company is about gaming and Game Pass. All their games release day one there, and Microsoft wants to put Game Pass everywhere. Gaming is the biggest entertainment industry in the world, something that for some reason still goes unrecognized through society for the most part. Gaming is growing so much that even Apple is trying to get into it, 
showcasing how the latest Resident Evil games can now be played on the latest iPhones. Microsoft recognizes that most of the world owns mobile smartphones, and have shifted strategy from trying to sell people on the idea that owning an Xbox is needed to play video games to that of as long as you have a smart device, you should have access to Game Pass. Their acquisition with Activision was in large part to own King Developer, the makers of Candy Crush, a mobile game that brings in billions in revenue per year. Game Pass is now not only on Xbox consoles, but on PC, on smart TVs and with Microsoft recently announcing they are building a new mobile storefront to be implemented on Android and iOS, soon Game Pass will be fully downloadable on smartphone devices. However, gaming is only a part of their services, I only talked about it to show you the approach Microsoft has taken to subscription-based services. This same approach has now become their business model. Windows, Office, Azure, LinkedIn and Xbox are all part of an ever-growing ecosystem that has enabled the largest company in the world to have skin in the game. Microsoft's cloud service, Azure, is one of the leading platforms in the globe, eating away at Amazon's web services. Offering a vast array of services, they are now increasing their presence in global networks of data centers. Azure hosts websites and applications that handle comp, lex data analytics and machine learning workloads. When you pair this with some of their strategic partnerships, like that of OpenAI, it puts them up and front with the rest of the competition. By the way, the projected global value of cloud is now estimated to go up to $3 trillion. Microsoft's successful strategy of acquisitions has paved the road for them to become the most competitive force out there. Microsoft has skin in the game and competes with pretty much everyone. They have Sony, Amazon, Google, Apple, Meta and tons of others. Their acquisitions of GitHub, of LinkedIn, of Activision, have all been made with the intention of not only getting access to new industries and technologies, but with the intention to leverage all their services and products, now powered with AI, to dominate them all. Microsoft is a behemoth of a corporation, one that won't go away for a very long time. Their strong financials also back up everything I have said. Microsoft generated about $212 billion in revenue in the trailing 12 months, which is approximately 142% higher than that which the company achieved a whole decade ago. Their earnings from operations have more than tripled, and given the fact they continue increasing and acquiring revenue streams, this is likely to continue going. Microsoft is my favorite company because it is so large, competitive, successful, brilliantly led and proven. But don't let that alone deter you from telling me what you think about this list. Let me know below what your favorite investments are for 2024, what you plan to buy and hold. If you haven't already, hit the Discord invite link at the pinned comment of the video. Thank you for watching this video through its end, hope to see you on the next one, peace.